Today in this lecture, we will talk about the solute and water transport in the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle. As we are discussing the mechanism of urine formation and we have discussed that inside the kidney there are millions of nephrons. In each nephron, initially there is filtration, then there is reabsorption in the proximal tubule, then the fluid, the filtrate reaches the loop of Henle, then the distal tubule. And we have discussed this thing in detail. That this is the structure of nephron. It has a glomerulus, the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, the collecting ducts. So today we will focus on uh, this loop. We will focus on this green color loop, which is the loop of Henle. And we have simplified this diagram here. The, the loop of Henle has two main parts, the descending part and the ascending part. The ascending part, the descending part is thin segment. This is the thin descending segment, while the ascending part has a thin ascending segment and a thick ascending segment. This division of the loop of Henle into the thin and thick segment is due to the structural and functional differences. The, the thin segments, the thin segment of both the descending and the ascending segments have thin epithelial membrane. The epithelial cells in the descending and the, the thin descending and the thin ascending segments have thin epithelial membranes, uh, sorry, thin epithelial cells. And this, this, this diagram, this diagram is basically a cut section of the thin segment. This diagram is the cut section. It is a cut over here. It is a cut over here. So they have thin epithelial cells, these cells have no brush border, these cells have no uh, mitochondria and there is less of metabolic activities. So these are thin segment. The thick segment is shown here. Now this is a cross section and this is a cross section in the thick segment. And we are looking at this thick segment from above. We are looking at it from above through a microscope. Now as seen here in the thick segment, the epithelial cells are thick, they have thick brush border, they have a big uh, cell membrane, they have a lot of mitochondria as shown in the orange color and they have a lot of metabolic activity which helps in the absorption of calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium etc. Now the functional differences are really simple in the uh, descending and the ascending segments of the loop of Henle. The thin descending segment has been shown in the blue color. The blue color is for water and it simply means that the thin descending segment of the loop of Henle is permeable to water and there is a lot of water reabsorption from this loop, from this thin descending segment into the uh, uh, into the uh, uh, surrounding area where there are a lot of capillaries and the water can get reabsorbed into the capillaries in this uh, interstitial spaces. So this is the interstitial spaces and along this interstitial spaces there are a lot of capillaries. The fluid then moves between the capillaries and interstitial spaces. So this descending segment, this descending segment is permeable to water. But there is literally no reabsorption of other ions like calcium, calcium, magnesium, bicarbonate or other ions. There is a slight reabsorption of urea, but this area is very much permeable to water. Now, almost all the water that enters the loop of Henle is reabsorbed into the thin descending segment. Initially, when, fil when filtration occurs in the glomerulus and the fluid starts moving in the uh, nephron, about 65% of water gets reabsorbed, about 65% of water and sodium is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule, from the proximal tubule into the interstitial area. Then around 20% is reabsorbed in the thin, in the loop of Henle. 20% is reabsorbed in the loop of Henle and out of this 20%, almost 100% is absorbed in the descending part. Almost all of the water reabsorption that occurs in the loop of Henle occurs in the thin descending segment. Now, the Thin ascending segment, thin ascending, we will uh, label it as thin descending and this one is thin ascending. So the thin ascending segment and the thick ascending segment, they are literally impermeable to water. Oh, this area has been shown in red color, orange color and water cannot move this way. Water cannot be reabsorbed from this tubule into the in surrounding interstitial area. So these, these cells, the cells present in these area in the uh, thin ascending and the thick ascending are have tight junction. They will not allow water to move from these tubules to the uh, interstitial area. But there is slight reabsorption of some ions from the thin ascending segment, slight reabsorption of some ions like calcium, magnesium or sodium in the thin ascending segment. And there is a lot of reabsorption, a lot of reabsorption of calcium, magnesium, bicarb, sodium, potassium, chloride in the thick ascending segment. In this area, in this area, a lot of ions get reabsorbed from this tubule, from this tubule, from this region into the cells, 
from this tubule, from this region, initially into the cells, and then finally into the interstitial area or into the interstitium. So that's the difference between these segments. This segment is permeable to water. These both segments are not permeable to water. And this area has slight reabsorption of ions. And this thick ascending segment helps in the reabsorption of a lot of ions. So most of the ions reabsorption occur in the thick ascending segment. Now how the reabsorption of different substances occur here? See, when there is no reabsorption of water from this segment, the water starts accumulating here. When a lot of water starts accumulating here, this segment then helps in the dilution of urine. Is This is the process of urine formation. The fluid starts moving here and this uh, fluid becomes urine in this process. Here, when the reabsorption of water is occurring, it helps in the concentration of urine. But this segment is not reabsorbing any water, so it helps in the dilution of urine. And in some circumstances, the reabsorption in this area may decrease, which will concentrate urine, depending upon the conditions. Now, how reabsorption of different electrolytes and water occurs in this segment? So, in these cells, we have a sodium potassium uh, pump. Sodium potassium pump. This pump is throwing out sodium out of the cell. This is throwing cells, sodium out of the cells and is pushing potassium into the cell. So, this is throwing potassium out of the cell. Now, these cells have a basolateral membrane. This is the basolateral membrane. This is the basolateral membrane. Here we have the sodium potassium pump. Here we have the sodium potassium pump, which is throwing out sodium, which is throwing out sodium and pushing potassium into the cell on these basolateral membrane. On the luminal membrane, on these sides here, in the luminal membrane, for example, this is the luminal membrane and outside is the basolateral membrane. So from the outside membrane, the sodium is thrown out of the cells and potassium is thrown into the cells through the sodium potassium pump. This creates defici deficiency of sodium in the cell. There is a deficiency of sodium in the cells. So, so sodium in the tubule, sodium in the tubule, sodium in the tubule, sodium in the tubule, for example, in this region, if there is any sodium in the tubule, it will start moving from the tubule, from the tubule into the cell, from the tubule into the cell. And this movement of sodium, this movement of sodium occurs through one sodium, one potassium, two chloride channel. This is a protein carrier. Now, this takes its energy from the downhill movement of sodium because there is deficiency of sodium. Sodium has been thrown out by the sodium potassium pump and the, the remaining sodium from the tubule is starting in, entering through the uh, one sodium, one potassium, two chloride channel. And it takes its energy from the downhill movement of the sodium. So, the movement of sodium from the tubule helps in the reabsorption of potassium against the gradient, although potassium is being thrown inside. So the, the concentration of potassium is high inside the cell, but still a lot of potassium is reabsorbed from the tubule, from the tubule, from the tubule into the cells, from the tubule into the cells against the gradient. And this process also helps in the reabsorption of chloride. Now, some of the potassium, because a lot of potassium is coming into the uh, cells, some of the potassium will leak out. It will leak out and it will lead to positive charge. It will lead to positive charge in the lumen. So here inside the lumen, here inside the lumen, in this area, in this area, this is the lumen, uh, this is the lumen, uh, this is inside the lumen, there is some positive charge, plus 8 millivolt, plus 8 millivolt. This positive charge will push calcium, bicarbonate, sorry, this, uh, this will push some calcium and magnesium and some other ions to move. This will push some calcium, magnesium, sodium and potassium to move between the two cells through the paracellular area. It will move different cell uh, ions between the cells through paracellular area and this will help in the reabsorption of these ions. So that's how the thick ascending segment is reabsorbing these ions. And when these ions are moving, it helps in their reabsorption. But in this area, we have another pump. We have another pump, which is the sodium hydrogen pump. Now this pump basically throws out hydrogen. This throws out hydrogen. Hydrogen is thrown into the lumen. Hydrogen is thrown into the lumen in this, so that the hydrogen goes out into the urine. The fluid that is moving in this area, it goes out and it thro is thrown out into the urine. So hydrogen is thrown out of the cell, it goes into the lumen and uh, with the help of this uh, movement, sodium is thrown in. So this is another process which helps in the reabsorption of sodium. So that's all about the loop of Henle, which has a thin descending segment, a thin ascending segment and a thick ascending segment. The thin descending segment helps in the reabsorption of water. The thin ascending segment and the thick ascending segment are impermeable to water. They helps in the dilution and concentration of urine depending, the, depending upon the uh, circumstances. 
The thin ascending segment is partially allowing the uh, reabsorption of some ions and there is a, a huge reabsorption of different ions in the thin thick ascending segment and this reabsorption is basically with the help of sodium potassium pump which is throwing the sodium out of the cell which is throwing the sodium out of the cell from the cells into the uh, interstitial area and is throwing potassium into the cell and this creates deficiency of sodium so sodium in the tubule gets a chance to enter the cell sodium in the tubule gets a chance to enter the cell and this movement is with the help of sodium one sodium one potassium two chloride carrier protein now this uh, movement is a uh, this uh, movement of sodium is a passive movement it uh, it is due to the deficiency of sodium in the cells but this energy of movement of sodium helps the reabsorption of potassium against the gradient it also helps in the reabsorption of chloride and there is then some leakage of potassium outside which creates a positive charge in in the tubule and that positive charge pushes some of the positive ions like calcium and magnesium to move along the paracellular area and they are also reabsorbed from the tubule into the cells and the purpose of the reabsorption is not to allow these ions the purpose is not to allow these ions to move into the urine now there are some diuretics known as loop diuretics loop diuretics diuretics are substances which helps in the formation of urine which increases the urine formation process there are a lot of diuretics but one of the diuretics are loop diuretics a good example is lasix which has frusamide so frusamide basically blocks this pump one sodium one potassium two chloride pump or carrier protein is blocked with the help of frusamide or lasix once this carrier has been blocked there is no reabsorption of sodium to uh, potassium and chloride and then there is decreased reabsorption of calcium and magnesium these ions then cannot be reabsorbed they start moving along the tubule and they can go out into the urine normally then the functions of the nephron the thick ascending segment will not allow these ions to move into the urine and they will not uh, be wasted but the the loop diuretics will uh, waste these ions which will lead to a lot of diuresis because when a lot of ions like sodium potassium are moving they also move a lot of water with them so which helps in the diuresis and that's how the loop diuretics like frusamide and some other diuretics act and that's all about the loop of Henle. thanks a lot for watching the video